Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Telling It Like It Is. My name is Jade Alberts, a founder of Peer Guidance. We are a purpose before profit group that guides small businesses, startups, and entrepreneurs from inception to exit. Sharing knowledge and stories is why I started Telling It Like It Is. It's live. If you have any questions, ask away. If you're watching this after the fact on another social media channel, put your question in there. They will be answered. I would like to thank Startup TNT for their sponsorship. They their investment summons connect new and experienced angels investors to startups. To date, they've raised over $1.3 million. Also, tomorrow at 5 p.m. is the Clean Tech Summit. It will, uh, the first of uh, the top 20 pitches will go 10 this Thursday, 10 next Thursday. So make sure you check that out. Uh, and now we get to today's guest. Rashad, how are you today? Um, thank you, Jade. Thank you. Um, I'm good. Well, that's good. I know that was a little long intro today, but uh, it kind of is what it is. I want to make sure that people understand, uh, you know, the Clean Tech Summit and, you know, the importance of startup TNT and what they're doing. So now I can devote all my time to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so what I'll do here, uh, Rashad, is I always like talking a little bit about uh, about how we met. And I believe it was on an MVP Monday. I reached out to you. Craig Elias does some really good work with that. And uh, we kind of had a call and, and it's kind of moved into the next level. And, and here you are sharing your story. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll give a little introduction here and then we'll get into the uh, questions. So Rashad has a master's degree in macroeconomics. He's worked as head of treasury, business controller and business analyst for multinational corporations and medium sized companies for more than 17 years. He's passionate about software solution development. He's a dad to three boys and his leisure time, he spends time with his kids riding his motorbike and 3D printing things. And I'm sure the boys love the 3D printing, I would guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. So, so Receipt Depot has absolutely nothing to do with 3D printing. So how uh, how did you come up with the idea of, uh, of Receipt Depot? And please share your journey with us. Um, well, uh, I am uh, working with uh, certain type of small, mainly small businesses uh, as a as a private, let's say, um, consultancy. Uh, I have kind of my little little boutique, um, let's say, venture where I work with the companies and help them to uh, manage business, uh, to re-engineer their processes. Uh, and while I was working with the companies, uh, I faced, uh, I faced with one of the challenges when they were not successful in managing their expenses, their costs, which directly impacts their gross margin and the company performance. So when I uh, dig deep into the root causes of the problem, it happens that they actually uh, do not successfully issue the invoices to their customers and track their expenses. And I was surprised saying that, guys, there are a lot of available and very nice solutions, high-tech solutions uh, out there. And um, like in the United States, we verify here in Canada, there is bank and uh, there is also uh, expense management uh, application uh, plus QuickBooks. They say that they either overcomplicated with their interface, user interfaces and all the features there or uh, they are too, time, too time, uh, time consuming to use. So I decided what's, what, what's, what's the really root causes? Like uh, is this complication, time consuming? And they say that it's just, we don't want to deal with this. We want it to be as hassle free as possible. And when you get this kind of feedback from 10 people, 10 business owners, yeah. uh, most of them are in the construction area, you came up with the idea, there is a really, really issue. There's a problem which at least construction self-employed people are facing here in Alberta, where you have all these applications, why don't you use them? You are aware about them, you are about, aware about their solutions, but you don't use them for whatever reasons. So uh, that's where I decided that, okay, why don't I try to make um, uh, just a real mock and uh, give it to them to try. We made a very, very, very minimal set of feature application. Uh, the core is that, that the core differentiator was that they just take a picture. They don't allocate uh, expenses themselves. They do nothing absolutely. Where in, in competitors, you have to say, okay, this is the travel expense. This is direct expense for your product and services, or this is um, uh, kind of uh, GNA expense. Here, 
they just take a picture and forget about it. And at the end of the month, they get automated, nicely, beautifully arranged, um, let's say CRA compliant report where the accountants will be able to use it to um, uh, file the tax report. And they like the idea. There was 30% of our beta users, for example, uh, they actually were using QuickBooks and received it at the same time. When we ask why you still use QuickBooks, they say that if you would have invoicing feature too, we would just quit Quick, uh, QuickBooks. I said, really? Are you serious? They said, yes, we don't use the QuickBooks because we like it. We just have to because it's one of the options. And this way, I kind of came up with the idea that, okay, I need to make it some, I need to make something real serious available both in uh, iOS and Android um, uh, phones. So this is the kind of short summary of how I came up with this idea. So you kind of took away my next question about how the app works when you talked about it. And I mean, I know I've downloaded, I've used it and, and I can go back to 1993. I've got all my stuff on spreadsheets, all my mileage, all my receipts, you know, ready for my account and things along those lines. So I haven't been able to use it a lot because of course we can't go anywhere and, and eat out and <laughs> have a whole yeah. lot of receipts yeah. to scan right yeah. now. But starting next week, I'll be eating out again and having receipts to take photos of. But that's something that I that I really, really liked about yours. And I haven't used one in the past, so this is this is new to me as as a user. And when I took that photo and it just popped up and it was, you know, a couple food ones that in there, I got the email at the end of the month on a spreadsheet that says, you know you know, restaurant food items. And, and there it was. I was like, oh, geez, this is pretty sweet. Yeah. And uh, people like yourself, uh, they really had to uh, allocate the expenses. You, you had to think when mm -hmm. you could. I mean, I'm not saying that be lazy, but at the same time, many services in, in the world right now, they are they actually created because of the laziness of the people. They they solved they solve specific problem which are not of importance for you or for me because we are, we are trying to focus on other things which are more important for us and that's why we procrastinate and don't want to do certain things especially bookkeeping. Uh, so we decided that okay, comparing to QuickBooks and other applications, they force you to put your time and efforts, even if it's ten seconds, to do something. We say is basically we're mobile bookkeeping for you. We do everything for you. All you have to do, take a picture of the uh, of the receipt, and that's it. So I know one aspect of the app that I have not used yet, which is probably the one that intrigues me the most, is uh, well, I mean, I've I, I've played with the um, the mileage one, but again, not driving a whole lot right now. Yeah. But is it's the invoicing side of it, and again, that's something. Again, I do that manually because it's easy. I only have we only keep so many clients, and even now we've waived the fees for COVID, so I haven't been invoicing anybody. But I mean, that's something that I'm interested in, in using. How simple is that to use on the app? Uh, that one we also try to really simplify to the maximum possible way. If you have a regular customers, and you have specific uh, set of services you provide like uh, they're mostly the same more or less yeah. now once you one time create them in the system both the customer list and the services all you have to do literally just pick the customer pick the service uh, since your rate is already predefined it will automatically calculate the taxes and uh, the invoice uh, will be generated in pdf file which okay. you automatically right away instantly can send via WhatsApp, email, or whatever communication applications you have. Perfect, perfect. No, I, I mean, it seems if it's as simple as taking the photo, I, I mean, I know it's going to be easy. I just haven't had to use it yet. You know, we were having a little conversation before, and, and I want to touch base on this because I have this conversation with a lot of, uh, with a lot of startups and entrepreneurs about the tech side of, be, of you know of being an app. I mean, I understand, and and I've heard many horror stories. I've had a lot of really good stories, and and but you know, touching base and making sure people understand the what goes into the app, the importance of who you have build your app, and what can you know from start to to where you are now. 
you know, touch base on that and maybe some of the difficulties that you're, you said that you're going through now because of maybe earlier decisions. And I mean, and you're not alone in this. I've, I've heard this yep. thousands of times. So it's, it's something that I like just reminding people of that decision who you have to make your app at the beginning can really, really make it easier down the road. Uh, what I do really believe is that everybody's uh, journey is different and uh, everybody needs to make decisions based on what technology to choose, uh, what kind of people to onboard, uh, or uh, how to implement certain marketing growth strategy. Uh, it all depends on the each, each, and, each and every situation, and it's never the same. Yeah, there is, a, there is statistics of reasons to fail or to succeed, but uh, what I believe is that we need to choose everything uh, based on the, our current circumstances. That's what happened to me. And uh, right now, the challenges I have is basically it's uh, uh, investment versus like the money, the funds available uh, for quicker growth or medium, medium pace growth or smaller growth versus the, uh, let's say, uh, the, te the technology you are implementing. Because uh, developing so any software requires at least three experts. It's uh, mobile developers, it's a backend developers, and it's a, a database or DevOps uh, database administrators, uh, network administrators. And all of them of a good expert and knowledge are quite a, quite a pricey uh, here uh, in North America. So uh, we made decisions which actually uh, force us to think of uh, how we can right now to change situations so we onboard those, onboard those experts or on our uh, in our startup, but mm -hmm. for that we need to accelerate the growth in order to gain enough revenue to pay uh, these guys. So uh, there is no specific and clear answer, <laughs> but we try to tackle the problems when they appear. Some of them we can anticipate, which I anticipated this problem with the with the technicians and stuff, but some of them you cannot. But uh, what I learned is just take it easy, relax. Depending on the problem, just make a decision whether you like it or you don't. What, what, no matter what, what will be the consequences. So that's my overall approach uh, in my startup right now. Yeah, I don't know if I could answer your question. No, no, no. It, it, it is, it is right. And and you know we've had this conversation and 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 which is like one of the sponsors here, Startup TNT, which is why it's important. People think that there's a lot of money out there, but you know what? You have to have a really good startup, and you have to be showing growth before a lot of investors will. Well, you know whether whether it's a first step, whether it's family and friends, you might be able to get away with. But the angel investors want to see some sort of MRR. So yes, yeah, it's um, yeah. it's something that it, it, it's important, and and having growth is isn't easy. So that's you know some of our discussions in December have been we really have to take away what you're doing and focus on growing your company and getting there. And there obviously are different ways of doing that. You know the sales side of it, banging on doors, opening up doors, when it may be like that. But then you can also do some, you know, social media advertising and things along those lines. So, uh, rather than talking about how, what you're doing to grow the sales, I wouldn't mind touching base on uh, your social media because I know you're just kind of starting out and looking at it and and doing some advertising in it. So, can you explain why you've picked the platforms you've decided to go with and and how that is uh, moving forward? Uh, I made my little research on the what are the most, let's say, uh, ROI-friendly uh, platforms mm -hmm. right now. And I basically, as a matter of the fact, uh, I, ha I had to choose whatever is the uh, really well-known as Google and Facebook. Facebook goes together with Instagram. Um, and I decided, okay, I'll, I'll follow the best practice, just try whichever works for me. I, I directed some minor budget to the Google ads and the Facebook ads. And the way I expected it, uh, we got a better uh, return on investment uh, uh, or let's say uh, customer acquisition cost from per platform better in Facebook with Instagram rather than uh, with Google. But in order to understand whichever works for you better, you have to put the minimum budget, uh, take at, mid, at least one month or three weeks and to see these trends, what works and what doesn't work. We we didn't spend too much thinking on, uh, okay, which is better. We just decided, okay, let's go with the most 
let's say, big ones and see how it works. Yeah. And it, it paid off. We didn't waste time. Uh, we put the medium budget. Now we exactly know what to do and which platform to choose for further advertisement. And, that, and I think that's a good story, right? We talk. I talk about that a lot. You don't know your numbers until you actually try. And, and yes. says, oh yeah, well, we should advertise on TikTok. Well, probably not. I mean, as of right now, the, the conversion rate on TikTok is next to zero for a lot of people for the simple fact that it's an entertainment platform right now. Will it get to a business platform? I don't know, but I mean, influencers will tell you difference, but reality is numbers don't lie. <laughs> So, yeah. you know, Facebook yeah. is good. And, and, and obviously we've had success with clients on Facebook, on Google, on Instagram, obviously LinkedIn, but it's, uh, it's a good lesson, right? To start small, put your money out there yeah. Yeah. And, and seeing, and seeing what, seeing what it does and tweaking your ads and, and going that way. So, you know, good on you, uh, Rashad. Again, I'm talking with Rashad Bayram, the founder of Receipt Depot. You can click on his website in the comments section. So when you're when we're talking about scaling and moving forward and growth, what's next for for your receipt depot? Uh, we uh, since we know our kind of our digital marketing uh, outcome and results, we will put consistent efforts into the digital marketing. At the same time, we will try to uh, engage, uh, depending on the COVID situation, whether in person or via uh, email and other means of communication with uh, mainly construction uh, professionals, trade professionals here in Canada and partially in the United States. We are right now op trying, uh, well, planning to open our application for at least three states in in United States where the biggest construction volumes are ongoing. Mm -hmm. uh, because again, for us, where we, everything started from is specifically complaints and feedback from construction professionals, self-employed people, who are, which were, let's say, kind of missed uh, in, from the eyesight of all these big uh, QuickBooks-like companies. So providing, uh, reaching out to them, uh, trying to educate them on the easiness and hassle-free concept of our application, and that we're targeting only and only bookkeeping services. It's a basically bookkeeping service on the go. Uh, but not accounting. Accounting is a completely different area, and that's where we're not really uh, into right now. Yeah. And, and and that's where things get complicated, right? I mean, some people. I mean, I have I've had an accountant, and and even when I went back to Saskatoon, I used to give my buddy a bottle of whiskey to do it for me. Now I actually have to pay for it, but it's a little more complicated. <laughs> <laughs> with, with mine, right? it, it's it, it is and I take my stuff and I, you know, I have all my spreadsheets and I give it to to my account and away I go and whether you do them on your own whether you you know, you know use TurboTax or something along those lines it's fine this will be able to integrate and make things a lot easier and I think that's the biggest fear for a lot of people is is when it comes to taxes oh my goodness I've got a shoebox here or something along those lines I mean this just can make your life so much easier and as an entrepreneur and I, and I can't stress this enough. If you are organized, your chances of success are a heck of a lot better. And if you're not worrying about your taxes and where your receipts go, you should be out there selling. So being organized, having that you know peace of mind with Receipt Depot app and all your stuff in there, and it gets emailed to you at the end of the month, something you don't have to worry about when you can be focusing on the growth of your business. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we literally, ultimately, our philosophy or vision is uh, make uh, bookkeeping literally seamless for the small and medium-sized businesses. Uh, seamless literally, well, you have even no worry about the uh, original receipt because we store them for you based on the Canadian uh, law for seven years in our database as long as you're a customer. Yeah. So uh, even that of kind of was taken care of. And then, I mean, that's... Again, it's it, it's just something that you know I can't stress enough when it comes to uh, the importance of being organized and and then having your your mental state of mind when you don't have to worry about the little things and you can focus on the things that you need to focus on as an entrepreneur just helps your mental wellness. It helps your it helps everything and and yeah. and I really, and again I really like what Receipt Depot is doing. For anybody who wants more information, click on their website in the comments section. So uh, Rashad, I mean, being a, being a, a gentleman who's come from the corporate world and you know, you've been an entrepreneur for a little while now. So the last question I have is always the same. 
If you had one piece of advice for a small business, a startup or an entrepreneur, what would that be? After anybody decided, after everybody did their homework on research and uh, all the uh, pros and cons of their uh, idea, all I would say is just do it. Don't overthink, just do it. Because the more you think, uh, the more uh, it doesn't start makes uh, create, uh, let's say, extra unnecessary emotions of fear, of loss, or whatever, whether financial or town wise. Just do it because uh, without even trying, I have a little philosophy. I better try uh, and fail rather than don't try. Because if I try and fail, I will learn. I will gain a lot of experience. And I can do it over again knowing that. But without living those uh, those failure, uh, those problems, uh, I mean, I will always uh, stay where I am. Like yeah. they say that if you, if you want to change something, change. So my overall advice, after you make a research, just do it. Do it, try to execute, uh, and uh, see, how, see where it takes you. Uh, and also, don't take it personal. Look at this as a little fun game. Because when you look at a fun game, you don't put your emotions, you don't stress, you don't uh, burn out emotionally. Uh, that's what I right now do. Even if I, if you lose money or you're there is money, it's just money. You can always earn them. I understand. Maybe it doesn't make sense, but uh, our health and our mental health are more important than any money in the world. That's why while you do it, take it as a game. That's it. That's great advice. And we share that all the time, right? Get out there, find out, do it. Step. If it doesn't work, no different than your social media testing, right? Find out, get out there. Yeah. Does it work? Doesn't. You don't need to spend a lot of money on some of those things to find out if they work. So that that's great advice, uh, Rashad. I really appreciate that. And again, for anybody who wants to uh, find out more information about Receipt Depot, click on the their link in the comment section. We'll take you directly to their website. Again, Startup TNT. The Clean Tech Summit starts tomorrow at five o'clock. So check that out. The link is in the comment section as well. And again, Rashad, I really appreciate you coming on, sharing your knowledge and your time with us. And, um, you know, we wish you all the best with Receipt Depot and um, and look forward to chatting again. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Uh, it, it's my pleasure. Uh, and uh, I'm just uh, trying to do my best. Uh, we all do. So again, thanks again, Rashad. I hope everybody has a great day and we will chat soon.